This is the Art Zone. This is the Art Zone. The Art Zone is a video document of the arts and artists in the Rockford area. This is the Art Zone. This Art Zone, an interview with up and coming Rockford artist Wendell Martinez, highlights from the Senior Art Exhibition at Rockford College, the 1997 Mayor's Arts Awards, video art from Meat Space, and just a ram minute at the Rockford Art Museum. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Hi, I'm Doc Slavkowski, and this is the Art Zone. We're coming to you from J.R. Cortman Center for Design downtown in the heart of Rockford's cultural district. In this Art Zone, we'll have a conversation with emerging Rockford artist Wendell Martinez, who's presenting his art for the first time in a solo show at the Cortman Gallery. We'll take you to the opening of the Senior Art Exhibit at Rockford College, and then out to the Clem Arboretum for the 1997 Mayor's Arts Awards. Jim Asbury and Devin Hankel of Meat Space present video art, and we'll see part of a multimedia performance art piece from Paul Harvey Oswald, plus just a ram minute from the Rockford Art Museum. So sit back, relax, and enter the art zone. I think you've had enough. It's a warm, bright, sunshiny day downtown Rockford. We're on a rooftop with artist Wendell Martinez. Wendell, you have been described as a new breed of young Rockford artists. Um, do you think that's an accurate description? I think so. I think it's just a, a matter of age and uh, the fact that uh, you're doing work. But do you think your work is different from other Rockford artists that have gone before you? I think so, yes. Uh, it's just a matter of individual style and content, what I'm interested in, what I choose to address. There are some of the um, large paintings that you have at the Cortman Gallery are, um, they almost have almost like a comic book feel to them. And is the inspiration from that from the comics or? Uh, yeah, when I was a, a kid, I was really into comic books. A lot of the drawing I did was, you know, superheroes and uh, a lot of fantastic stuff like that. Um, recently, I'm very, very uh, influenced by Japanese animation. I like that a lot. Um, the large red piece near the stairs is taken directly from a comic book artist uh, by the name of Frank Miller. Um, his art is all done in just black and white, uh, high contrast. Um, I like his work a lot, and so I had to uh, embellish on it a bit. You also have an image that some people have a, a difficult time looking at is the the uh, woman in bondage. Tell me about that. Um, well, the bondage itself is kind of interesting. Uh, the whole little, the whole little culture and uh, involving bondage is, is kind of intriguing to me. But the piece isn't necessarily about literally uh, S and M. It could, uh, it's open to interpretation. I just liked using. Uh, the sense of restraint and, and restriction in that image. It could be, uh, it could be about anything. I titled the, the pieces with the four uh, black men, Native Son, after a favorite book of mine by a black writer, Richard Wright. Um, uh, to me, literature uh, just, it lets you get a bit more out of life because you just step into that and it's kind of like this keyhole into a, an existence that you can't normally step into uh, on the street, you know. And what kind of response have you been getting from your work? What are people saying? What do they say to you? One person mentioned that it, it made them feel uh, a certain amount of molestation or, or uh, uh, something of that nature. And is that in there? Um, that was a response to the the untitled three face piece. So, um, although that's not a that's not a, wasn't a, a primary uh, ambition of mine, I could understand that response because of the graphic nature. And talk about that piece. Uh, this is a sort of a stark black and white, um, long right. uh, piece. What is in that? What what does that mean? It's uh, it's kind of a just a very expressionist piece 
in modern modern form, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of emotion. Um, once again, it's all open to interpretation. You know, one person might think that she's yawning, another, what have you. Um, I think black and white is the perfect color for that piece. Very high contrast, very stark. Uh, I enjoyed doing it. Most of the stuff in the show is, is really hard-edged, kind of sleek. That's just something uh, kind of uh, just playing around with at the moment. I think, uh, I think uh, technique and style is something that people uh, really change over the years. Some people you know, keep it. Like Lichtenstein, you know, he's still in the same type of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very sleek, and I think it uh, works well with, with the content of the show. Do you feel um, a change in your style coming on, and where are you going with it? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think, I think after, uh, uh, after I finish a series, then it's time to go to the next level and just keep uh, building and changing. You know, after I finished all these pieces, I felt that they seemed a bit one-dimensional, and it's time to to move up a notch or so, and uh, you know, continue with that process. Uh, some people might see anger in your work. Are you angry? Uh, I think uh, everyone's a little bit angry. Maybe some more than others. Um, Reminds me of something uh, Bob was telling me, uh, you know, staging an artist's life where they're the angry young man, they have axes to grind, issues to address, so forth and so on. And I think as an artist it's important to stay in that angry young man phase as much as possible, as long as possible. I think great work is done in that, in that period. And when you say Bob, you're referring to? Uh, Robert McCauley. In your artist statement, it was almost spiritual in the sense that you said that you felt at one with other artists. Explain that. Uh, I think, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, you're always alone when you're, when you're doing work. Uh, but, uh, and then on another hand, uh, you're, you're in league with all the others who have, who have done that. You know, uh, art history is, is very interesting to me and I enjoy reading about other artists' lives, it's, it's the source of inspiration to me, you know, uh, artists admire other artists and they make a lot of pieces in homage to those artists. Um, it's just, uh, it's reassuring for me to, uh, to uh, find out about their lives and about their work. Uh, it's, it's definitely very inspiring and it's something that kind of refreshes one and keeps you going. You not only make art, but you will be helping other young people make art this summer. You'll be working with the Lewis Lemon Summer Camp. Tell us about that. Uh, I'll be assisting a, a visual arts class. Um, I'll be doing painting, drawing, uh, maybe a bit of sculpture, things of that nature. I think uh, uh, I'm very excited about working with younger, younger people, and I think uh, What's important for them to know as young creative people is that uh, people may restrict exhibition of their work, but no one can restrict what they choose to make. They're under no obligation to create anything that should comply with other people's tastes. It's all under their control. Uh, they can choose exactly what they want to make. And uh, in that sense, uh, the artist has a, a real, a real uh, godlike power. Anything they want to, anything they want to make, they can make that. Anything they choose to represent or do, they have complete control over. What is your reaction now when you look at work that you did five years ago? <laughs> um, I still like it. It's definitely a record of five years ago. Um, it's nice to see. I, I keep a lot of sketchbook and stuff like that that I, I go back to and look at. And uh, mainly that's where a lot of the work gets done. You know, half of the work is in the sketchbook and then the other half is, you know, on the canvas.
I think art is, is uh, I think it's a primary thing that defines humanity. And it's always going to, someone's always going to be doing it. I think art is, art is freedom. Art is a record of existence. Art, art gives you a certain power, you know? I mean, if I had my choice, I, I, I would choose to have more power than I do as a human being, you know? I, I'm always wishing that I could do more than I can do now. That, uh, but art definitely uh, kind of satiates that urge because you have total control. And the power is in the control? Power is in imagination, it's in the control, it's what you choose to do. Um, it's, it's a way of exercising, you know, your ability to, to imagine. And now here's art professor Robert McCauley to present the senior art exhibition at Rockford College. Well, this is the uh, senior show at Rockford College Art Department. And this is the end of the semester, and for many of these people, the last show of their career as an undergraduate art major. Uh, this show has a certain history to it. The history is that we, as faculty members, don't really tell them what to do or how to do it. We put uh, all these unique individuals and egos into this room, and then we close the door and let them have at it. And what you see here in, in the uh, gallery is a result of that uh, collaboration or that collision uh, between all these artists. Um, most of these people uh, will go on to do probably some form of art. We have BA students and we have BFA students. It's always hard to tell how that's all going to play out. Some of our graduates go on to teach at universities, some become uh, major artists, some go into other tangential kinds of businesses and other people will may not ever make another piece of art but that's really not the important part what we're interested in here is this process of beginning working through four or five years and uh, having this as the outcome uh, the range of work is always mixed and if you see a show like this it'll always occur to you that it's a strange show it's a show that's uh, more heterogeneous it's a mix it's uh, uh, kind of a hard show to put together, so you have to really congratulate these students for being able to do this uh, because uh, you have so many varied approaches to art and to get that all to work together is quite a task. The Art Zone, it's the next best thing to Saran Wrap. And now the Art Zone takes you to Clam Arboretum for the 1997 Mayor's Arts Awards. We're at Clam Arboretum and we're with Martha Mitchell at the Mayor's Arts Awards, the 1997 Mayor's Arts Awards. Tell us a little bit about the awards. This is the ninth annual Mayor's Arts Awards and this is where we honor the cultural event of the year, the student artist of the year, and the individual artist of the year. And uh, the, the uh, individual artist started nine years ago. The other two events have only been the last two, but it's exciting because we have so many wonderful artists to recognize in this community that we needed to expand the awards just to begin to recognize some of the talent that we have here locally. The recipient of the 1997 Mayor's Arts Award for the Cre Creative Cultural Event is Uncommon Lives, an extraordinary woman in the arts. We're talking with Marty France, the winner of the Mayor's Arts Award for a Creative Cultural Event. What was your Creative Cultural Event? You know, I've been working with Uncommon Lives since 1991. Uncommon Lives is a week-long celebration, uh, extraordinary women in the arts. And... We've had a lot of fun. I think that the creative process is as much getting the women of the community together and to talking about who we want to see, you know. The original idea for Uncommon Lives came from a group of women who were sitting around talking about, why don't we have to go to Chicago or Milwaukee to see the artists that we want to see? Why don't we bring them to Rockford? And so we just did. The recipient of the 1997 Mayor's Arts Award for the Exceptional Student of the Arts is Grant Fetter.
We're talking with Grant Fetter, who received the Exceptional Student Award for the Arts. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, why you received this award. Well, it was uh, because of the Good Idea Theater Company, which I was uh, the founder and uh, the artistic director for. Uh, well, I shouldn't say was, I am. Uh, we've done uh, Jesus Christ Superstar uh, here in Rockford at the uh, Women's Club Theater, and uh, we've done a Vita, and plus we're doing several different uh, small events, like uh, we do uh, murder mystery dinners and, and things like that for... Uh, Can we see your award? Let's Can you see, see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, sure. show us the award oh, here. Right. Here is the award and the beautiful flowers yeah. to go along with. And the award is designed by a Rockford artist. Yes, right? yes it is. I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't say on there who did it, but it is designed by a, a Rockford artist. Thanks very much. You're welcome. The recipient of the Mayor's 1997 Mayor's Arts Award is Dorothy Bach. horn, the lips, the roses, and the little columns, the little Greek columns there. So it definitely is Arts Award as far as I'm concerned. Okay, we're talking with Dorothy Bach, and you are the recipient of the Individual Mayor's Arts Award. Why? Why? Well, I have a long history of working in the arts. Um, my background is in uh, English literature, the teaching of literature and writing, and also it is in the visual arts. I went to Marquette University to get degrees and so on in writing, and also uh, University of Notre Dame. So I've been working in both of the arts, and actually when we started Women's Space Center here in 1975, I wanted it to promote uh, literary capabilities in women so they could publish their own works. So we teach writing classes, we publish for them, we help them get published. We do the same thing in the arts. I do my own artwork and I do some teaching of classes, but I also promote women to start their own galleries, exhibit their own things, and begin to really shine. And it's just wonderful to see people coming alive who thought they would never create what they're creating and get ecstatic about it. Talking with Mayor Charles Box, tell us about the awards and how you feel about uh, being able to honor people with the, this d distinguishing. This is one of the great things about being mayor. You can have great people through the Arts Council help you uh, uh, receive nominations and then they go through the process of selecting the people who have done so much. And it's a tough job for them because so many people give so much to the arts day in and day out, never expecting recognition, never expecting honor, and then to narrow that down to one individual, uh, one student, and one event. It's extremely difficult, but it speaks well for this entire community. This is, I told people earlier, this is Rockford, Illinois. People coming together. In this case, the quality of life of everyone is being improved by people just sharing uh, and something that's so valuable for all of us. Many communities, I'd say most communities, don't have what we have here. Uh, not only the arboretum to enjoy, uh, but people coming together to share their talents and skills with the entire community. And that's what city and community should be all, should be all about. This is the art zone. This is the Art Zone. Art Zone. That's what I enjoy. Art Zone. Devin Hankel and Jim Asbury of Meat Space introduce a video art piece entitled War Paint. Hi, welcome to Meat Space, uh, care of uh, Art Zone. Um, if you notice, we weren't on last month. We kind of took a month hiatus. To build this new set. Uh, I. I was in jail in Mexico and Deb was asleep. Building the set. Building the set. <laughs> and uh, tonight we got a piece called War Paint by Alexis Ball. It's uh, from 92, I think. And uh, even still though- Still relevant. Even though it's still, it's an old piece, it's still uh, a nice piece of work, very striking image and use of sound. And uh, we should take a look at that now-ish. I got work and I'm tired.
The Art Zone, better than Barney. Hi, I'm Matt Herbert, Curator of Collection at the Rockford Art Museum, standing in front of the newly restored sculpture Knowledge by Laredo Taft. Um, people may know Laredo Taft as the sculptor of the Black Hawk statue uh, near Oregon on the, the Rock River. Um, both these sculptures have been in the museum's collection since the 1940s. Uh, they were given to us by Taft's widow, and they were currently restored by Don Reed of River's Edge Foundry in Oregon, Illinois. Um, knowledge of beautiful figure, uh, done around the turn of the century, as well as despair. Um, the other sculpture, uh, they're both uh, been newly refinished and structurally renovated, and we would invite people to come and take a look at them. The Rockford Art Museum presented a unique art installation called Some Kind of Grand Balance by artist Jessica Holt. The artist describes the exhibition as a multimedia role-playing funhouse. 
In her own words, Holt says, this installation will deliver new identities and offer an ambiguous site for play. The artist sees play as a means to create change on both personal and community levels. The site must be ambiguous to allow for various groups to feel comfortable in this unusual creative environment. Visitors are issued photo ID cards and are invited to walk through the exhibit and feel free to explore, change things, interact with other patrons, and just have fun creatively. When I'm not busy here, I'm watching the Art Zone. Thanks for watching the Art Zone. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 968-0123 or stop in and see us at J.R. Cortman Center for Design, 107 North Main, downtown Rockford. Also, if you would like to see past episodes of the Art Zone, they're available for checkout from the downtown Rockford Public Library. Once again, thanks for watching the Art Zone. <laughs>